To be or not to be independent? That is the question the Scots will have to answer next month when they vote in a referendum that will decide their nation's future. Though it has been part of Great Britain since 1707, Scotland has had its own devolved parliament and control over areas like healthcare and education for 15 years. Now the Scottish National Party, led by Scotland's First Minister Alex Salmond, is fighting for a complete split from the historic union, meaning they'll be able to determine their own defence and foreign policy, as well as full tax and spending priorities. The referendum is not about this party or this First Minister or even the wider Yes campaign. It's about putting Scotland's future into Scotland's hands. But just a few weeks away from the referendum, voters aren't convinced Scotland can make it on its own. Most polls suggest that 45 to 50 percent of Scots would rather remain part of Britain. Around 30 percent say they will vote yes to independence, while the rest are undecided. The main issue, analysts say, is the economy. It remains unclear whether Scotland as a sovereign state would be able to keep the British pound as currency. And many doubt whether revenues from North Sea oil and gas will be enough to secure the future of an independent Scotland. You should be thinking, what is the Scottish economy going to be like? What are the revenues for the government going to be like in 50 years' time, for example, or 100 years' time, when you and I are dead, um, but our children and our grandchildren are part of a Scottish economy? So that is the key question. Salmon has accused his opponents of carrying out a campaign to scare off voters from claiming their sovereignty. Whether they choose to sever ties with Britain or not, Scots will have to remember that if they do end up going it alone, there will be no turning back.